Hey everyone, welcome to another video. You have to cherish sites like this. This is why we're at controlling pest species. So we can have an abundance of all these little critters. And this is my primary target again for it there. I've done quite a lot of squirreling this winter. But I've been enjoying it. Numbers have been there. Now if you want to control grey squirrels in the UK, you want it, to be, want it to be productive, then you need a dedicated feeder. You can use a pop-up hide, or you can use a semi-permanent hide. And personally, I fill my feeders with mixed poultry corn, or wheat if I can get it, but wheat's a bit thin out ground at the moment. Here's my first visitor, straight into action. 7.15, only just broke first light, so ATN's in uh, night mode still. Gives me better clarity first thing in the morning till uh, daylight breaks through. And here it is in slow motion. It's all about timing with squiddles, like I've said before. Let them get comfy, sit on their own just. Take your time. Release your shot when you're ready. There's no mucking about with that one. Pulled it straight over. I've mentioned it many times. Grey squirrel. Invasive species. Big pest in UK. And this particular woodland is producing decent numbers. So if the decent numbers there, they have a detrimental effect on all those species. Now shot placement's really important. If it's side on, one of aims at top of head between eye and ear. Now for a full frontal shot, straight between eyes, but a little bit further back towards top of head, so that pellet penetrates through brain. Here's my setup. Primo sticks, shooting window. I'm watching my feeder about 20 yards. Daylight's broken. I've got a nice viewing window. I've got a secondary window with camcorder set up. So I can see either side of feeder as well. I've got a nice clear view. All that normally does gives me an opportunity to spot squirrels as they're coming in. But sometimes that quick, you don't have opportunity to put camcorder on. Thankfully, I've got ATM 4K Pro Scope, so I can record footage on that. And again, no mucking about. 7.30 a.m., 15 minutes after first arrival. That's another clinical dispatch. A little bit of twitching. It's what we come to expect. Now, this feed is designed... We have about a two and a half, three inch ledge. And the reason it's designed like that is so that you get presented shots. If you can see how squirrels present itself, it's either full frontal, side on, or just quartering away slightly. That enables you to place your shot correctly and achieve clean kills. Now there's an old variety of rifles out there and it all comes down to personal choice all i'd say buy what your budget can afford buy something that's got a good power level so uk legal limit run it about 11 and a half foot pounds it'd be ideal as hunters we're pretty much spoiled for choice here's my son's old p15 with mv100 plus scope on top this is his new rifle BSA Ultra XL, it's got uh, Alpex Micro on top, he's a mate's rifle, that's a Kral Punch and Knight I believe. He's another mate, Bifa, he's got S510 Tactical. And here's my favourite choice of rifle, Ultimate Sporter, top with 4K Pro. Get what your budget can afford, 
a good springer will do the job just as well. Just learn to shoot it correctly. And it'll afford you the same accuracy and same power levels as any modern PCP. That's a little bit action-packed this morning. So I've had two in first half an hour of daylight. It looks like I'm onto third. Got a lovely spacious side. It's only just holding up to weather, if I'm being honest. It'll have to be replaced a little bit. Well, this summer I'll replace it. So 7.45-ish. Third squirrel arrives. It's not too impressed with its uh, comrades laid on floor. Has a little bit of pull on one. Goes to the second one. Same thing, really. I'm just over it crosshairs about. I'm being patient. I'm expecting a good feeder. It changes its mind because there's some loose feed on floor. Squirrels tend to do that. They scratch it out, looking for tasty morsels. And if it sits like that, then it's going to get dispatched. That's number three in bag. Can't get any cleaner than that. Here it is in slow motion for you. Look for shot placement. We've got a little black bird just at right at frame at picture. Plenty of bird activity this morning. Raise it up slightly. Anywhere around there. And there you go. Lovely shot. Not much twitching. I mentioned there were a lot of bird life on the on this morning. So it just shows you that pest control is doing trick really. A lot of activity around feeder. Now what I want to say to people that shoot squirrels is don't put a lid on your on your feeder. We're there to conserve wildlife. That's the old point of shooting squirrels. So let old bird life take advantage of free food source. We trim squirrel numbers down. They get extra food through winter, which means the survival rates are up. So it's a win-win situation from our point of view. Looks like someone else has caught me eye. Eight o'clock. Another grey on feeder. Get myself comfy. Plant them feet I always talk about. Straight onto the feed. I'm just waiting now. I'm expecting it to go for another piece of wheat, but it didn't. He sat up. He sit up for too long. You're not going to last long. That's number four on woodland floor. A little bit of inhibition kicking in. A little bit of flipping around. You can see it's not trying to lift its head. That's another clean dispatch. Just going to aim just above eye. Just above eyebrow. Slightly quartering away, squirrel. So direction went pellet impacts. I'll go straight through brain. Possibly sever its spinal cord. Anyway, around there. Dump. Lights are dead before it hit ground. Perfect shot. Really, really pleased with that. Exceptionally pleased with that morning's going so far. Quite a cold day. Quite breezy as well. Oh, wind picked up at session, went on to be honest. It started off relatively calm. Your thought process now, I'm thinking, oh, four squirrels in bag. That's some lovely meals. There you go, pleased with myself. There's my camcorder. 
just got it attached to like a gorilla tripod thing. You could attach them most places. Really handy bit of kit. As you can see, I've just uh, put it onto the back of that chair for this particular morning. I was sat there thinking I could do with another set of sticks, use a GoPro handlebar mount, attach the camcorder and attach camcorder to some sticks. So it might be something I'll look at doing. But again, it's extra kit that you got to carry. Tough at time. I make do with what situation presents me. Looks like I've spotted some more movement. I think I noticed a squirrel coming from behind feeder. It's around about quarter past eight. There it is. Comes up from behind tree. Has a little bit of a mess around. Goes onto the top of feeder first. And some has been chewing my lid. It's a good chance it's this one. Because it's only one that I've seen sort of exhibit that behaviour. I'm filming this one with camcorder. That's it. It's another one on the ground. And it is from the ATN's point of view. Quartering away shot above eyebrow. Pass centrally through brain. That one with a little bit more et up. Probably got me a bit more adrenaline. It is mating season now for Grey Squirrel in UK, or one at mating seasons. So testosterone will be flying about. It bounced about a little bit. Come to a rest, probably two or three yards from feeder. It's easy to keep your concentration. When it's busy around feeder. I'll just take a couple of minutes now just to have a look at wildlife and particularly birds that are out feeder. I've heard a couple of pheasants in area but they haven't ventured near feeder. And I think the lone survivors from pheasant season it's just uh, just about to finish actually. 8.30, another squirrel just coming from right. Again, I've picked up on camcorder. It's interesting to see how they react. All squirrels are different. Some just straight to feeder. Some have a little bit of mess around first and then the belly gets better. They decide, oh, it's time for something to eat. I did think this one were going to bugger off to it right, but it does eventually make its way back. As you can see, it's quite a few bodies on floor now. But apart from that one squirrel that showed a bit of interest in a couple of bodies, they've not been fussed at all. Sometimes it makes them a bit jittery. Position camcorder on feeder. I'm expecting squirrel to shoot at one of these branches I placed there. If I remember that, I think this one decides it's staying on ground, picking up some loose feed. You can see how that wind's blowing with squirrel's tail. Didn't make any difference to shot placement. We've got a nice steady breeze though, coming left to right. It's good night for that squirrel. I'll have to do a little count up. This uh, this feed has only been up a few months and I've counted for quite a few squirrels. I've had a couple of mates accompany me. They've had a few as well. You can see what I mean about bird activity. A lot of blackbirds around. 
some little blue tits or cold tits maybe. Actually helping yourself to a feed as well. Right, activity works in your favour. Squid will see it from a distance. Gives them confidence that the area is quiet and it's a safe surroundings. Lots and lots of activity. It's good to see. Like I said before, it's conservation work that we're doing. But why not let these little critters have a feed? Increase the survival rates. We'll have more offspring next spring. Which in turn is better for ecology at woodland. They are prey animals as well. For birds of prey like sparrow oaks. So we're supporting a whole ecosystem really by controlling grey squirrel and providing these little birds. We're a bit more of a safe haven. Around about 8.50 a.m. Spot more movement from right. Similar position to the last one. Again, I've got it on camcorder. Showing a little bit of interest in one of their bodies. But nothing out of ordinary, really. It's normal behaviour, this. You can see how grey squirrel blends into woodland floor. That combination of grey and brown. Busy tucking into some food. That was that squirrel's last supper. It is from ATN. Straight to woodland floor. Join his comrades down there. That's another one, it bike. It's all good when you start massing big bags of squirrels. As I've said before, you've got to show them ultimate respect, process them, put them make it into the food chain. Tough little buggers to skin. It takes a bit of time, but they're more than worth effort. Here I'm just fighting camcorder up. Possibly seeing some more movement. I could even just be filming it, birds and wildlife. Nope, reaching for rifle. Definitely another grey squirrel in area. And I could hear them chattering on a few occasions that morning, letting out a little chattering sign or call. A couple of warning signs as well, or warning calls. At about ten past nine. Yep, short work of that one too. It's pellets of choice. JSB exacts 10.34 grain, 0.177 calibre. You can see eyed now. If you look closely, you'll see silencer pop out at end at eyed, or that shooting window. It's around about 9.30. The grey here. Picked it up on camcorder. Sometimes when they come from distance, you have time to get camcorder ready. Other times you don't. Other times they just turn up. If they just turn up on feeder, then I'm conscious. You know, I want to keep my movement to a minimum. So I don't reach for the camcorder generally. I just try and capture footage on ATN. Now what I'm excited to do, I will bring... Uh, that BSA Ultra Art. It's got Ig Micro Alpex on it. I've had that for a while now. I've got it all set up. I even zeroed it. I'm glad I didn't zero it because it's gone to a new rifle. 
It'll be interesting to get that out and see what footage looks like. Just getting camcorder in the right position. Auto focus kicks in. This could be number nine. I've lost track a little bit. Yep, that's number nine, I remember it well. A little bit of a dangle about. Well, that's officially at number nine in Best Bag on Squiddles. It all comes down to location, really. I ain't got much woodland. Or what woodland I've got, it's only little patches, so I don't tend to get massive numbers like some people. I had a feeling this permission had produced decent numbers. And it's proving to be the case. I'm sat there on number 9 thinking, I've got to wait for number 10. I've got to get into double figures. They were around about half 9 in the morning. But it must have been 5 minutes later. And number 10 made an appearance. Took that one from basic treat. I didn't want to take any chances. I wanted that double figure bag. And I thankfully it happened when it did. Another clean kill. Number 10. Double figures. Happy days for me. Not so much for the squirrels. But all these squiddles will go on. They'll all get processed. They'll all go into my belly. Or I'll pass them on to friends and family that like a, a little bit of squiddle. So at number 10, decided to call it a day. I could have probably sat out a few hours longer. I had probably two or three more, if I'm being honest. But they'll be there for another day. What I tend to do when I shoot a feeder, I'll get a couple of weeks to rest. So a quick look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Walk over to ninth. Nine's just over there. That thrashed about a little bit. And then number 10. Come from that direction, I believe. Really happy with that. What a session. Hope you enjoyed the video. Some decent content today for you. Feeder's looking good, holding up well. It's time for a pickup. I'd already give them all a little kick with my foot when I first went out there. I know they're all stone dead, so I've got no fear of when I pick them up that they're going to turn around and bite me. Definitely don't want to nip off them. They've got some nasty uh, incisors. They will make a mess of your hand. They were last two, so I'll give them another kick just to make sure. Don't you just love it when a plan comes together? Makes all that work, hard work and effort worthwhile. I mean, mate, be fair. Help me get all this hide material and feeder and stuff and get it all set up. Unfortunately for him, he hadn't had much opportunity to join me because of his uh, shift patterns at work. But between us, we we've set up a, a great location. Near they are. Hopefully. All lined up for a picture on log. As always, I've hiked in another uh, second mixed corn, 20kg. It's a fair walk with this. 
I check feed level. It's only gone down by about eight inch, and I think I filled it up last time. I don't know, around about 4th of January, something like that. It's definitely first week in January. Now, there's a feed hopper, probably 20, 30 yards from this feeder, and it's generally full for pheasants. Now, I'm thinking because pheasant season's coming to an end, maybe that hopper's not full. I didn't think to check it on morning. But this is probably only viable food source for squirrels in woodland now. So that's probably why activity is picked up. So what I do is I top feed her up. Ideally, I didn't want to be doing what I do next, but I have to do it on occasion because I can't be carrying that back uphill, back to the car. So I've top feed her off as much as I can. Just level it out, push it down a little bit, make sure the lid goes on nice and secure. Get a little tap, put my rock on top so nothing can just lift it off. Now what I'll do with rest of mixed corn is I'll pour it all over woodland floor in front of feeder. What that'll do, it'll prolong how often I have to fill feeder, but it saves me carrying it back to the car like I've said. So all birds will get a feed of that. Squirrels will feed off it as well, so it leaves feeder a bit fuller. So that's this session concluded. As ever, thanks for watching, thanks for the support, and I'll see you next one.